My name is Maxim Dunin, and I am an Nginx developer. Today, I, will, I would like to talk about the dynamic models we've introduced this winter. Um, first of all, let's remember some basics about models at all and uh, dynamics, mo d dynamic models in particular. As you probably know, models in Nginx exist for ages uh, from the very first version, and um, actually Nginx is uh, a collection of models, and uh, even very basic things like HTTP uh, is a, uh, or serving static files inside HTTP, uh, it's, uh, uh, even such basic things are models, and you can, uh, Extend Nginx by adding your own models, and model architecture allows to uh, allows one to uh, easily mo modify Nginx, and it's uh, I think it's very important part of Nginx itself, and uh, it's basically what make it so uh, so good what make it so so good and successful. Uh, last winter, we introduced dynamic models, so you can now load models uh, into compiled Nginx binary without recompiling Nginx itself. This was joint work of uh, Ruslan Yermilov and uh, me. First of all, why do not dynamic models are needed? As models, normal static models exist for ages, and uh, they work fine. Uh, moreover, Nginx have a very useful feature. It allows to uh, change the binary uh, without dropping any, any requests. So you can, uh, it's normally used for upgrade, but you can also I recompile Nginx with different set of models and uh, just switch to a different binary. So mm, there, is, uh, there is no problem with changing set of models. But uh, there is one problem with packaging though. Uh, it's very non-trivial to package Nginx with different models, especially when there are external dependencies, so you have to actually, or, or, you, uh, or you have to ship Nginx without models, uh, or you have to ship single bloated uh, package, and uh, this it, it doesn't work really well. So one of main goals, uh, was to simplify package management. And another, another goal of dynamic models was to simplify debugging so users can uh, just comment out uh, third party models to make sure that uh, a bug they are looking into isn't imposed by some, some third party model that they have co compiled in accidentally. Here is a mini how-to uh, about using of dynamic models. You can compile Nginx uh, with uh, several standard models as the dynamic by using uh, dynamic suffix, suffix, and you can compile third-party models as dynamic by using add dynamic model uh, configure option. And then in Nginx uh, configuration, you use the load model dire directive uh, to load a model. Uh, let's now look, uh, take a look at some implementation details. And uh, most interesting things we were working on while implementing dynamic models. First of all, we decided that Implementation should be simple because there are a lot, a lot of third-party models, and we can't just uh, force all developers to change their models uh, and make it hard for them. So it was important to minimize required changes to models. Initial trivial uh, solution we, we've considered was to just. Uh, Load all models compiled from a uh, fixed directory on Nginx startup. This requires no changes to model, uh, models code. 
uh, but it still requires to, uh, changes to model config scripts. So we uh, implemented something a bit more complex with load, load model directive in the configuration. So you can load and unload models from the config and don't need to uh, rename or move files on the file system. Here are the list of some problems we were working on uh, while implementing uh, dynamic loading. Uh, let's look at them in order. First of all, model config scripts. It's probably most complex part of the, all, all the story, at least from implementation point of view. Uh, so there are many existing models and compatibility is, uh, is very important. You, we can't just break everything. So uh, we have to provide compatibility with the old models as well. Essentially, model config scripts are shell, uh, shell code. We, and uh, in config scripts, models uh, just set some global variables. And uh, Nginx configuration will then recognize them, uh, these variables and use them. We've uh, left everything as is. So the same vari variables are still used by Nginx configuration. And, and we've introduced after model script uh, to assign these variables. So now there is an interface to assign these variables for static compilation. And it also knows how to assign variables for uh, dynamic compilation. So uh, by converting your model config script to use after model script, uh, you uh, make it more clear and uh, also add dynamic compilation. We will later take a look how to, how to do this for an example model. It's uh, really trivial. The second problem is a list of models inside Nginx. It's, uh, it's a global variable. And the problem is that we need uh, in, each, in each configuration, we need uh, own list, uh, its own list of models. So we have to replace a uh, global variable with uh, cycle models and, uh, inside a, a, a list of models inside a particular configuration. The global variable is still here. So if a model doesn't uh, need uh, to support the dynamic loading, it, uh, it can even continue to use it. It, on, it, will, it won't break. But uh, if a model is a complex one and needs to, needs to be converted to, to understand the dynamic loading, uh, it it needs to be changed to, to use cycle models instead, but it's a pretty mecha mechanical change. Another uh, problem, model indexes. Each model is described by a global uh, structure, and X model T, and uh, this means that indexes uh, as stored within this structure cannot be changed. So if, uh, if the, the index is assigned, you can change it later. Uh, Moreover, there should be no conflicts with previous configuration. So if um, you've loaded a model in previous configuration and a new configuration, you haven't loaded this model yet, you still can't use the index of this model, reuse it, uh, because this model can be loaded later. Uh, it's something Nginx uh, core uh, takes care of while loading models. And uh, there are, we've introduced uh, Nginx count models function uh, to assign uh, CTX indexes for complex models. Uh, next order of models. It's important in some cases, especially if you uh, write a filter. Uh, for example, 
Xip must happen uh, before writing the data to a client, and uh, both these tasks are done by filters. So you have to provide uh, appropriate model for uh, appropriate order for filters. Normally, this is done in static compilation. This is done uh, via configure order. But when you're loading a model, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't have an order. Uh, so we have to uh, store configure imposed order in, inside the model itself. So Nginx, while loading a model, uh, takes a look at the order recorded and in the model and uh, places the model into appropriate place in the model list. Next, pr next problem uh, is that Nginx uh, uses conditional compilation on uh, various structures and it doesn't compile uh, structures, the, it doesn't compile some fields of the structures which are not used in a particular compilation. And there is no appeal layer between these structures and uh, models. So it's, uh, these structures are essentially a part of our IP, API. So uh, if you try to load a model which was compiled with different set of configure options, it will likely just seek fault because it will assume different structure layout. To prevent this, we will introduce signature checking. Uh, so Nginx checks if the model was compiled with the same options and if it was compiled with a different set of options, it will, ref uh, it will refuse to load the model. And Interesting thing that we were managed to implement this into in an existing uh, macro, so no changes to models are required at all. It will just happen happens to work magically. And similar thing is version checking. The same problem with structures uh, happens when you switch from version to version, and uh, again, seek faults when loading a model compiled with different uh, Nginx v version uh, is something you are likely to see if you try it. So while loading a model, and uh, Nginx checks uh, the version uh, the model was compiled with. And the, the last problem, filter chains. Filter chains are global as well as model list, and they are initialized during post-configuration callbacks. Uh, so most of the configuration problems like syntax errors, etc., happens before this, and uh, they will, be no, will not be initialized. But some, uh, some errors can still happen uh, after the filter chains are constructed. So if a configuration will fail after the chains are built, an Nginx will roll back to the old configuration and will unload just loaded models. As a result, Nginx master process will be in an inconsistent state. So uh, it will uh, it will not have a model load, but the model will be linked in filter chain. Uh, this this is not fatal, as a master process doesn't call filters itself, and normally it will just reread the configuration, build another uh, filter chains and we'll spawn new workers with cor uh, correct configuration and filter chains. But there is one small case when 
this can be a problem. If some worker process dies, Nginx will try to respawn the worker with current master uh, state. And this state is inconsistent, so the worker will die to by referencing uh, unloaded model. This problem requires rethinking or re-implementing filter chains in some per configuration uh, way. S but, and as it introduced, uh, as it happens only in some very specific cases with other bugs combined, we uh, left things as is, as it will require too many changes to models. If you have a good solution, please share. So what we ended up with, uh, after model configure script, NGX model global uh, replaced with cycle models, uh, count models function to assign context indexes in, for complex models, and the load model directives. All previous models continue to work fine. And uh, most of the models can be trivially converted for dyna dynamic loading with only some simple changes. So let's look at uh, what needed to convert your model to dynamic loading. It's actually three simple steps for all models, and in most cases, only one required. You have to rewrite your config script to use after model. And in complex cases, you have to use count models, and you have to uh, replace NGX models with cycle models. Let's start with complex cases. Here is an example from Nginx itself, how to count models. It basically replaces the cycle, uh, the, the loop in, uh, in the code with a function call. And how to replace Ngx models with cycle models. Again, we just replace the global references with cycle models. And in most cases, you will have to rewrite your config script. And in most cases, it's, it will be the only thing you have to do. Uh, here is an example for a simple model. Previous version, which uses the global variables, uh, which uh, specifies uh, a DON name, HTTP models, uh, and uh, a, a DON sources. And new version, which uses the after model script, it basically does the same, but using the after model script, which allows to selectively specify the model type, name, included, directories, dependencies, sources, libraries. That's, that's basically all. But in some cases, you may want to provide compatibility with previous versions of Nginx. It can be trivially achieved by testing the Nginx model link variable. So if it's set, you use the new version, and if, if it's not set, you uh, still use global variables as uh, previously. Here is a short list of parameters of after model script. You can specify type, usually HTTP or HTTP AUX filter, name of the model, include directories, dependencies to check on building, sources, libraries. Some special values are recognized for libraries and Genix knows, uh, knows how to build. Or you can just provide uh, linker flags like uh, Nginx own uh, 
test C++, C++ small all does. And there are a couple of variables I haven't showed yet. It's and gx model link specifies linking types and it should not be set directly. It's expected to be set by Nginx itself before call calling the config script. And uh, the order, order of models to be used, normally it's set based on model type. So you shouldn't care about it unless you are doing something specific. It is also possible to compile m many models into a single uh, shared object file. Just using the same script, you specify uh, multiple model names and mu multiple sources, and uh, then use it uh, in add dynamic model or in add model parameter of the configurer. Now let's take a closer look on how mo model loading works, how it happens, and uh, some results of it. The load model directive uh, calls DL open, and uh, later when configuration is freed, DL close is called. So what happens when you're loading a configuration? New configuration calls DL open, previous configuration in, is freed and it calls DL close as long as the model is in the previous and in the new configuration, it just remains loaded. This is actually a good thing as you can even remove the model file itself uh, Nginx won't notice, you will still be able to reload the configuration when needed. Uh, it basically allows you to replace Nginx binary and Nginx models in uh, any order. So you can sti still be able to reload configuration if uh, you happen to it's if, if it will be needed. If you want to upgrade a model without Nginx it, it, itself, you have to actually do the same thing as you do when upgrading Nginx itself. You use USR2 signal, or on most systems, use service Nginx upgrade, which will uh, send USR2 signal for you. And the last topic I wanted to talk about today, further improvements. W things we are still working on and would like to share. First, compatibility between builds. It's uh, actually about signature checking and uh, closely related uh, to this checking. It's, it's a pain to compile dynamic models if you do it uh, not with Nginx itself. You have to use the same configure line or signature checking will prevent you from loading the model. And now we are working to, uh, towards making this easier. So uh, with special option, Nginx will just compile in all all the uh, structure fields it knows about and models, uh, even with different configure options, will be compatible. And you will be able to load them uh, even, if, even if you compile Nginx and the model with different set of configure options. And closely related thing is compatibility with Nginx Plus. Right now, it is not possible to load a model compiled uh, for Nginx into Nginx Plus uh, because of the signature checking and the incompatibilities between structures. And uh, it will be possible as a part of the compatibility work. Thank you. Any questions?
No questions? Uh, add-on name is basically um, a string which is printed during configure, and model name is actual name of the structure in your code. Uh, it must match the, uh, the, uh, the name you use in the code. So actually add-on name is something user-friendly, while model name is uh, an internal name of the model. Sorry, could you repeat? So, um, at, at what point um, during the uh, Nginx startup process is the uh, cycle uh, module, the new uh, modules uh, list available? During the uh, after configuration, uh, after uh, the configuration loading uh, uh, step, uh, after uh, shared memory initialization, those things? Uh, Sorry, uh, I, I'm not sure I understand you correctly, but uh, a st static list of models and geeks models, uh, it, it is static and, uh, and it's global variable. So Nginx basically uh, can touch it on per configuration basic, uh, basis, so it, um, as the, there are may, may be multiple configurations in Nginx at the same time. So to provide a configuration-specific list of models, it copies the uh, static list into cycle models and then extends it with uh, models loaded. If a model fails to load, Nginx will basically uh, reject the configuration, and uh, it, uh, there, 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 there will be no, no list at all, and the configuration will be destroyed. Uh, uh, they provide the same capabilities, but dynamic models is something you can load and unload on the fly. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's specific to dynamic loading, and it, uh, it's so, it, it is only considered for d uh, dynamic models. You can specify there are some um, order of uh, your own models if you need to, uh, but n normally it's set based on a uh, model type and it, uh, it is expected to be enough in most cases. If you need to dig into details, uh, you, you can look into Nginx configure scripts, uh, in, in particular after model less, uh, not that S, at the end, so uh, it configures Nginx own models, and uh, it, in particular, it uses model order. Does it have any correlation uh, to the filter chain, the index, uh, the filter chain uh, uh, Yeah, it, it is used to provide appropriate order for, uh, for mo models in filter chain, yes. Thank you.